is a chilling, now iconic image that shows 19-year-old Johar Zarniev standing behind 8-year-old Martin Richards. Moments before the bomb Johar is said to have planted at his feet went off. But what was he doing while the world reeled from this great tragedy and authorities began an all-around-the-clock search? Today, I met with a friend of his who actually saw him and talked with him after the bombing. Andrew Glasby woke up this morning at his dorm in UMass Dartmouth to the screech of a fire alarm. Me and my roommate, we both woke up at the same time. We was like, like what's going on? What's going on? As Black Hawk helicopters flew overhead, police went through the building telling students to leave now. It's not safe. I didn't have time to grab my wallet or my phone. Like, I only had time to, like, grab my sweatpants and my sneakers. Turns out, Jakar Sarnahev, the most wanted fugitive in the country, was living just one floor above him. You sat next to him in psychology. I, yeah, I sat next to him. And was he studious? Was he not paying attention? He, w he was pretty studious. Even more chilling, Andrew says he had a conversation with the target of a massive manhunt one full day after the bombing. It was like, wow. Like, he had the balls to come back and just be able to act okay be able to act like anything ha nothing happened that's how he acted like, yeah that's how he acted he just not act rushed not nervous nothing he just acted like it was another day to him. jahar the alleged bomber went back to normal campus life just a day after allegedly committing a terrorist attack card swipes at umass dartmouth show that he went to the gym and slept in his dorm two full days after the bombing not behaving like a fugitive from the law but trying to blend right back into his normal life how convincing was he on Tuesday to you that that nothing was amiss? He was he was so convincing. I thought as if it was just regular old jar. Like we had a typical conversation. He was not startled. He was not scared. He was not anything. He was just same old jar. That sentiment was echoed by other people who knew him. Chris Berry wrestled against him, and they were friends at UMass Dartmouth. He was one of the nicest kids. Uh, I mean, every single time I saw him, he'd make sure to say hi. Uh, he was very calm, relaxed all the time. For people who knew him, there were no warning signs. Andrew describes an average college sophomore who played intramural soccer, enjoyed FIFA soccer video games, and smoked a lot of marijuana. How often do you think he was doing it? Probably every day. But you said this year you didn't see him smoking pot as much. No. I, I think he told me from one of our conversations, he's like, oh, I don't smoke anymore. To friends on campus, he was a social yet low-key guy with a messy dorm room who liked hip-hop music. Friends never heard him talk about radical politics or religion, but authorities believe the ethnic Chechen, fully assimilated immigrant, lived a double life. It just really makes me wonder, like, the person next to you, are they really that person? Like, acting like they're really, like, this best person, but instead they're blowing up people. Andrew says Joe Carr told him his car was fixed, which he described as a green Honda Civic, even offering to drive him home to Waltham on Friday. I casually asked him, I was like, do you think I can get a ride home to Waltham? He was like, yeah, I got you. So he offered to give you a ride home today? Yeah, today I was supposed to get a ride home with him. Instead, he's in custody tonight, accused of committing the worst terrorist act on U.S. soil since 9-11. And authorities say we can all sleep a little bit easier tonight. Thanks for watching ABC News. Be sure to tune in for Good Morning America in the morning. Remember, they're working while we're sleeping.